went in from both another Australia and Westbrook rule, and we're at the Hell on the Hotel in Hell on New South Wales. And today we're with Andrew the Publican, Trish, her mum Jane, and Ian. How are we all? Oh, good, thanks. Hey. How long have we all been here? What about you, Jane? Uh, how long have you been in how long? I've been in how long? Uh, since 1947 permanently. I went to school for six years before that, and then I came back here. Well, where'd you go to school? I went to school in July. Did you? So that's a long travel down there. Oh, well, the people were just on you know, the end of the depression, the beginning of the war, and everybody else was, uh, I've got them on, running into the country to pay. My mother would have gone to the city. I had the hotel at the, at the courthouse, they'd tell for a long time. Just up the road? Yes, and um, when he saw that, we went down to the city, went to Geelong, because we really didn't know him, because, you know, it was six o'clock was, and you know, we sent to work all night. I don't think we all sat down for a beer, I mean, it was in Spain, and so we, um, we went to Geelong. Oh, did they have an ice back then to keep the drink? Did they have an ice back then to keep the drinks a bit cooler? Oh, they had an ice chest. A nice chest. Yes, they used to put ice in the top and the tray and the lay. The water used to drip down to the tray. And the fabric in one, I'll pick up a door one. Nice. So we got the electricity in Howland in 1939, the day we left the hotel. Wow. But we did have our own plant. Your own plant? Yes, and we had to listen to it and made it. We couldn't couldn't use an iron or a toaster if we got that or some airlines. And if anything went wrong, we have to go out the bed. There's something wrong with the end to the room. That's how you get out the candles. <laughs> no, I thought that they did get out the candles. My mother was scared of candles. She didn't make calls. We had lamps, though. Well, that's, um, that is an interesting saga for you growing up and going to school somewhere else and then coming back here. Yes, yes. I, I went, I bought the last 12 months I was in Geelong, but um, mum and dad came back. Well, we had a family moved, and he came back because he was the brother-in-law that died. Wow. One of the sister didn't have a family. Yeah. And he came back here, and we had a, had a brother who was, who was in, who wanted a job, so he got them. He went to Carlton County. Hey, you said before you've got seven children. Yes. Are they all still here? Yeah, oh, well, there's, yeah, there's only one there, although we'll be soon. Uh, yeah. Two the three girls have got homes here, and the uh, and Peter's on the farm, and the fans on the farm, and Dewey and Aubrey, and Chris and Jamie. Wow, so they're all still in the same area except for one. I know, she's, 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 she's finishing her teaching, uh, she's down in Melbourne at Kevin's, and she finishes on third Wednesday, and she and, uh, she's back in the Woodman. Wow, so you'll have the whole family back in the one area. Yeah. That'll be a good Christmas. Oh, we probably we nearly always forget about something. I don't know if it's good to go there. Yeah, uh, well, as long, as long as they all get it, I'll put it on. That's the honest And mum gets out there with the um, the whip and everything else. Now, you kids behave. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about yourself, Trish? How long have you been here? Um, all my life. Yeah. Well, you what? Not yet? No, um, well, we had a farm out the road and we lived out there, and then I went to boarding school. Uh, for high school, I had first three years at boarding school in Albury because the bus didn't, there was no bus past the door. Oh. Mum would have to bring, or dad had to bring me into town to catch the bus. And mum had just had a young baby too. The youngest was born the, um, my first year of high school. Wow. So um, it was easy for me to go away to school. My brother went to uh, boarding school in Wayne. He had six kids down there. And then the bus. They got the high school bus ran past the door. So um, the others, we had primary school, um, big school, yeah, primary school here, then all just high school. Oh, so you're the oldest? Yes, I am. Yeah. That's all right. So I'm like, yeah, there is three girls? Three girls and four boys. Four boys. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And then I think there's 15 grandchildren and five great grandchildren. So what do you do around here? Do you work? No, I'm retired. I used to I work in the bank. Sure, I was to retire. Yeah, I worked in the bank for nearly 40 years on and off. We had a business in Corowa and um, we sold that. And when I got married, we built a house in Howland. We lived in Howland since we've been married. And um, now I had enough and I retired. My husband still works. And I mainly babysit or 
Și au fost astfel, ce că n-am mă Și le-au pe ori, pe care îl vreți. Da, da, da. Dar zăzori ce e că lucrurile astea se îmbă. Da, da. Dar este una de mai și pot things, because if you don't have same, it's like a community, if you don't have that, you've virtually got nothing. Da, that's true. So if you don't look after family, but you look after community, especially the farming community, if you don't look after your farmers, then there's no food. That's true, yeah. So there's, there's no crops, yeah. there's no cattle, there's no milk, uh, and everything else. You no farmers, no community. Yeah. Uh, and what about yourself? How long have you been here? So we started growing in 75 and uh, 1976. So where did you come from before that? Uh, Aubrey, and then I was born down the Wishes. District of Victoria. Right. Is it Geelong? Geelong? Yeah, down the other side of Geelong. We won't say that Geelong this year. Was it my last spell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying a word at most, yeah, no. It's because I'm a common boy. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I can't help that. I've got four suits, no idea. But you came from Geelong to Aubrey to Hell. Hell. What what uh, what made you come to Hamlet? I had an auntie here, and uh, it was uh, got a lot of my father's sister, and, and um, we just uh, come out there and rush and play football. And... Yeah, and Lane was true. Yeah. yeah, when I shipped out there in seventy, uh, shipped out here in seventy six. Population was five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred. So what's the population here now? Three, 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 three. Yeah. Uh, wow. We used to know what everyone thought was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there used to be a racetrack down at the golf club. used to be a horse racetrack. Well, there was too, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great day for the last race. Yeah, yeah so they used to have that on um, uh, Sky Racing or something, didn't they? How long ago did they close down? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Before Sky Racing, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow, did you guys run around it? We don't have a little bit of a little Oh, with, with the salmon, oh, okay, then. Oh, let's look, we've found the 1948, 47. How long ago? Yeah, it would be. Wow. Yes, and then they, had, they played golf on the old football ground. Just to go around, they had a nine-hole course there. So the we, oh, they used the football ground that's there, and the first hole was right at the, well, they had a shed, and they used to, I ripped up the side of the shed and put some props under it, and that was their court near their pump house. So they had the bar in there, and that's where no, the jockeys were going? No, 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 no. no? <laughs> If you had a bar, it was in your back pocket, I think. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was to keep all the hooligans away. Yeah, no, 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 no. It was a long way to in the years. I think if they started the golf club in Ellen, 1929, I think. Oh, I love it. Okay. I think I one of my aunts was involved in it. Yeah, I think it was uh, established around about the same time that you said around 1828, 1829. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think she said 29. Yeah, yeah it's the, the first people to. Right, well, that's your time. The first people to settle here at How Long was around 1836, and it was two brothers. They bought 64,000 acres. Six. Yeah. I think it was, yeah. and they named it something else, and I think it was in around 1847, 1848, how long had an upper district and a lower district, and then they were combined from how long itself, yeah. so, and it went from there. The, the flour mill, in 1857, when they started production, they, I think it was the following year, they won a gold medal in... Philadelphia in America for their flower. And the hotel was opposite. There's a house that's there now with the hotel yep. with the flower mill hotel and they also have the punt hotel. Oh art great they used to put Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, but um, all the way <laughs> all the way back then. The flour mill was, I think, one of the first businesses in Australia to actually care about the conservation and environment because yeah. they developed a fan that sucked all the bad air and everything else back in from the flour mill. 
instead of blowing it out into the country soil and into the water. They recycled that air back through the, the flower mill. And it was one of the first conservationist and environmental machines uh, built, and I think that was around 1865, 1866, I think. So, and it's and for something like that back then, that was a big thing. And back then they knew um, the impact of things that would happen to the environment. They had, they had a, a famous a horse race near the Hundred Mile Race. Yeah. It's up in the police station, or where the police station is now. Oh, where, where hundreds of them. Anyway, it's up there. And I, I think they went right there and had the Catholic Church and around the town. I don't know how many times. They weren't running from the police, were they? The <laughs> Hunting. Oh, right. Oh, right. Did you read that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, that was horses, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I think they had to stay. Had to change the horses if it's not. I think it's a lawyer would take a horse in the river and uh, shouldn't ride a horse in the river and 10 miles because there's schools in the 10 miles. That's the limit for the horse to go. How many schools are here now? Um, so, oh, there's three schools. Yeah. And they still have school. Why? I don't know. There's only one school. There's many there. There used to be two schools. Oh, it's good. Andrew, how long have you been here? I've been here 15 years. But I originate from Rutherby. That's just up the road. Yeah, I was born and bred there. And before that, my mum came from Greenwich Plains. Where's that? That's just across the river here. Yeah. And it's a little area. And she was a flag. And back in the early days, the uh, Liam Mill Hotel was owned by the Was Well, it? Wow. So from Rutherby to here. Yeah. So what you hear besides the. Well, I've, well, I met my wife, which was Bernadette in uh, Albury, at the hillside. And her father had pubs, we went to Ipswich. And her brother had this pub, so he wanted to get out, so we bought it off here. So you went from Rutherland to here to Ipswich? No, I went from Rutherland to Albury, okay. then to Ipswich, and back to here. That's a good travel. I didn't even walk it. No, I didn't walk it, but Ipswich is a big load of gap out there. Yeah, that good. Oh yeah, the city and the first stop of my old jar. Wow! So you learned how to look after yourself pretty quick. So it gave me really good insight on how to handle hooligans and everything else yeah. on a Friday and Saturday night. Yeah, you just don't tolerate it. Anymore. <laughs> no hooligans in this pub. What's what you all in here? <laughs> so since you've been in the pub, have you made any changes to it? I've knocked out many walls. Yeah. In the whole bar, this be. When you used to walk in the, the front there, there used to be two double arches knocking out when I first came in. Then we built all the beer garden, which means all the smoke and noise come in. Yeah, no, that, that is a beautiful beer garden there, Nick. And then where you walk in the bar, there used to be like all the walls, which were three walls through there. We just finished knocking all them out. Took them out. We just finished painting them, carpet, fans, lights. Yeah. So what do you think a pub does for a community? What gets everyone involved? You gotta you gotta have a good park and you good people follow. Yeah. That's also a good meeting place for mates and farmers and yeah. people and they come in and, and have a good chat and laugh and cry and cause and they all hate they all hate beer. Yeah. Sounds like having spirits. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> but yeah, but no, it's the pub is one of the major hubs of any community, doesn't yes. it? I I've done it and um, I had this hotel. In the, in the end of the 1980s. Oh. That was a long time ago. Where was this pub? It was burnt down. He died, I think, it had oh, all of them had rice disease or something. I think they changed their name. Anyway, didn't you? That would be right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was whispered. I, I still get across that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, they, um, and, he, um, and then my grandmother went back to stay at the hotel in Bagger then. And, uh, she, uh, she remarried and uh, husband of all the courthouse up there. Wow. That's a, a really good tight knit community because you're from Rubber Glen. Yep. You're from here. Hello. You're from here. Yeah. You're from just up the road. And I'm actually from Bungalow. Oh, Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.
it's a very uh, yeah, kind of, of course, mean the beers brush over the feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we used to go from Pungamo to, uh, to uh, Elder Murray just down the other one every weekend, and every Christmas we were camping out there for a couple of weeks. And, mm. and then uh, when I was nine years old, we moved from India, unfortunately, but I uh, still a country boy at heart. And you can't beat the small communities because everybody gets together, everybody looks out for each other, and you could believe it. House unlocked and go to work or go away for the night and you come back and everything's still there and the house is unlocked. Because a, a small community is everybody knows everybody, everybody knows what's going on, everybody can talk to everybody, something happens, I pinpoint it really quick. That's a good thing about small communities. Mm. And that's a good thing about a pub because, as I said before, everybody can come into a pub, mm. have a cold beer or a soft drink or a spirit. Have a good laugh and a chat and a cry and just make sure get a job. Yep. Mm. But you, you can't go into a supermarket or a shop or a butcher's or anything else and do that with your mates. And with the COVID, I know uh, it closed a lot of things down for a while. Mm. And the mental health aspect of any community doing that is it puts more strain on the community. It puts a lot of strain on farmers. Mm. And without them, uh, you've virtually got nothing on it. Right. Because every farmer needs a community and every community needs a farmer. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, and it's just keeping the farmers alive within the community is paramount to anything. And the pub, the butcher, the hairdresser, the local shop, they all play a part in keeping community alive. Mm -hmm. So they do. So what does community mean to you? What does it mean? It means a lot to me. But I've seen the same answer that the old, the old, the dinner thing. And I hardly know many people in the house from there at all. I'm out to earn them. <laughs> and, you've, <laughs> and, and you've seen all the different generations grow up and, and evolve yes. and change. Yeah. Yeah. How's that been? Oh, it's good. Sometimes the conditions they are, and they come up to you and say, here they are. You can't believe it was a teeny little fella that just give me the check. <laughs> and but I find that I used to seem to be the scripture up at the school, and I find that the boys, they weren't hard enough. They were good to manage. They did, they did always want to know me, and they still do now. They waved to me, and the girls just put their heads in there. That is good. So do you still drive? Oh, no, I should put a license, but I don't want to have the doctor if it's all right. Yeah, we'd want to get off the road. Oh, no, you're going to get off the road. Yeah, get off the road. I just got a conviction. I'm going to say, you're 72 years. Yeah, right. I'm going to be careful, Ian. Don't ask me to do that. I'm going to do one of those shaking little boys that Jamie's just telling me about. Yeah, we're going to do one of those shaking little boys that Jamie's just telling me about. Yeah. Well, that's on your license, Marissa. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Bill went to get to change his address the other day. Or your mum's a character. She's not a good sense. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Change the last day. Any convictions? And he said, "I would never call." And he said, "He turned it up and he said, in 1987, you got fined at the corner of some street in Canberra." And he said, "I paid that fine." He said, "It's your price for the rest of your life." Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing about it. That's yeah, it's, you've got a fantastic memory. Oh, I have got a bad memory. Yeah, yeah no, you've got a really good memory. You've, yeah. you've brought up a lot today and, and let us know a, a lot about everything that's been going on with, with the town. And well, I worked in the shop with the with FAS now. And my aunt had that, and I worked there for 10 years before I was married. Oh. And um, she yeah, was like a. It was a general store. So what is it now? Is it still a store? Cafe. 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 Yeah. So they're going up market. Yeah. She used to sell it. I knew all about pay bales. I knew all about the nails. Oh, I do knew all this stuff. <laughs> so how did you go when they changed from pounds and shillings to decimal current? Very hard. <laughs> uh, a lot of people have found it hard. I wasn't there then. Well, Jamie was born in 66. And that was the year, and we've got $10 and cents or something. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. the first year of it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, it was hard. It was hard on every day. And uh, it's a new day, so you've got to put a day here. 
Yeah, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when you've got to go, you know, now that used to be a pound, but now it's a dollar. And now it's a dollar a pound, and you know, it's three pounds for four or two pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it could have been confusing, you know, especially when you're going, I'll have a pound of butter. Oh, I, used to, yeah, I used to do the camps, so I did the colour check years after I was married, and, um, and you had to move quickly. Especially in a shop or a, <laughs> or a hotel or somewhere that dealt with customers all day. Yeah. And with the currency, you, as you said, you've got to be quick, otherwise, you're going to put it over and you're going to go. Oh, God, you're going to change. Yeah. But yeah. Still going to start. It does. I don't think you can keep the store without a count money. No, I know that one. Oh, yeah, you can give them $10.20 and the PS5, you know, they can't work your idea back. What was that? And $25.20, but you got $5 back. Yeah. Yeah. You've got no idea. No, they say, can you make it simple for me? If I give you an extra $0.20, that'll mean you give me $5 back. No, I can't work that out. That's right. Yeah, which is really weird. Like my youngest two, their idea of how he was money, give it to me and I'll spend it. That's about a good value of money, isn't it? Trish, what does community mean to you? Oh, it's um everything really. You sort of um you're involved in anything, you get involved and um yeah, we're, we're involved we're involved with the footy club, the local footy club. That's the spiders? Yeah, now the spiders and um how did they come up with that name? I don't know. They just one. Huh? How did they come up with the name of the spiders? Oh, I don't know. They used to be called what they were the redbacks. Redbacks, yeah. Oh, I could be yeah. Oh, I think so. Yeah. I yeah. think it's all about it. How yeah. I went to the, from the Hume League to the Hume League from the Chippewa District. They were at a Navy Chamber of the Strong. They were called the redbacks then. And, and all the problems were done. Yeah. All that were the, the spiders, I think. They had the same colour. In the silver play because how long have the guy who the leaks and they thought they should change their jumpers. Well, you know, you can't go into the new league. How long have the leaks and they thought they should change their They changed the color. Then Bordel pulled there. Yeah, well, you can't go into another league and expect to get your jumper when somebody's established in the league. Yeah, you've already got it. Yeah, you've already got it. Yeah. It's in time with the Picatonian. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah. getting back to your idea of community. Yeah. Oh, well, you just help out when you can, like when you've been gone, or someone's in trouble, or there have been an accident or a death, I think, sort of rally around and you help, and you know, yeah, you're there for anyone who wants to be. Yep. So everybody still gets in and helps everybody else, even though the town's grown, community's yeah, grown. Well, you sort of, yeah, you still sort of know the older ones when they um, all gel together if there's something suspended by like fire or an accident or something, sort of all. Together and help. Yeah. Oh, so how many floods have been here since you've been here? Oh, we don't think we're we only talking about that the other day. There was, um, I reckon Kennedy Street was flooded in um, the 80s sometime. Early 80s. Early 80s, yeah, but it hasn't affected where we live. Um, but it's come up right, it's come up right up to the um, that first up at first first street, just that first yep. street. Yeah, it's it's come up right up to the round road there. They entered around near different tracks around from there. Wow, the boys. Yeah, probably um nineties. A lot of heavy rain here in the house over the years. I've seen a lot of places flood regularly. And it's unusual to hear of a town on a river. That's a flood. That, that hardly floods. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. This is easy to Victoria. Yeah. When New South Wales says once you get to Victoria, you plug it off the floor with me. Yeah. 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 Um, what's your idea of community? How do you feel? It's good. You know, that's why I shifted from all we get to the country because I'm a small town. I was born and bred on a farm. You know, I'm like the country people. And, uh, well, well, that's right, I was, Jack. Yeah, and uh, no, I just uh, I love the country atmosphere. Yeah, and as I've seen it grow up, and uh, all the mates we've had then, as uh, Trish had uh, nearly verified as well, the kids that you see the kids keep growing up, and they still respect you, yeah, they, they still respect you, you know, and whereas the 
the blood is a company, you know, that happened by it earlier that long. They're the ones that seem to be the player ones. They do, sir. Yeah, you know, and that, and, but that's, you, you go from the little kids here up to the old, it's like, uh, Mrs. Parker, are you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that. You know, and, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's I love good. I love the nice big silver Mrs. Parker. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but I, I just call you Joan. I know, but you're a bit nice. I'll be old enough now. <laughs> so you're special? Oh, well, I don't know how special you are. It's different. But no, I, oh, no, I don't know. Well, just, I'll oh, be involved with sport around here, you know, and, uh, and love it, being involved with the sport, you know, yeah. and, the, and the, the pub way especially. Yeah. The coffee. The contents. <laughs> 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 Bit of a thing, Jane. No, yeah, I, I can agree with the contents of any pub, but um, yeah, because yeah, uh, a lot of places have been to so far. The, the, the patrons of the town, the publicans, and people we talk to, uh, you couldn't get better friendly people in a smaller community. You know, they have a good laugh and a joke, they're thinking, oh, now this is going to be scary, what's going on, what going to say. And, we try to make it as relaxing and as comfortable as possible for people and you know you get to have a good laugh and a joke and you know and a stirring and yeah. you, know, you give it you get it back that's the good thing about any community that's yeah. right so and any community needs to band together like this one has mm. as trish said before with fires car accidents deaths and everything else like that the community helps you get in together and helps because all that's got a big major impact on mental health and Onset of depression and anxiety in my life. And any community gets in and helps each other with all that. And if one person's got a problem, one of their best mates is somebody else in the community knows and they go, okay, let's say there's something wrong. It's not all about it. That's the thing about a community. They don't push, push, and push to get things out of somebody. They just, hey, I can see you've got a problem, you want to talk about it. And they'll let them go and they'll talk when they're in. Which is good about small communities. Now, Andrew, since you've been here in the pub, what sort of things has the pub done for the community and the community sporting projects? And well, I sponsored a football club, the cricket club, was a pony club, and another hunter. That's not running any. Well, I've got that. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. They're only here, they're stopping people down there, but I don't know if it's actually covering it. Oh, yeah. Like some. We, yeah, we sponsor a few groups and get fundraisers for certain kids are in need and yeah. we help uh, them out and do raffles. Yeah. So, yeah, we've been, we've been doing that for a few years. So, I noticed down at the Metal Club, uh, a young lady, uh, yeah, the pavilion and the Metal Courts are dedicated to the memory of the young people. Mm. Well, I'm not going to ask about that or anything else like that, but I can see that um, the impact the young lady has had on the community for that to be dedicated to her, yep. um, as well as uh, the stands of the tennis club and footy ground and things like that. That's because things that the community are getting to help out. Well, it's the, the families have been here from the day dot, most of the Run the football clubs or the run the cricket clubs, uh, the salmon and the yeah. barbers. Races. Yeah. yeah. yeah they have been generations of families that have been involved in their groups. Yeah, they have been. I all the families, you know, like Simmons has had four boys, and, and they're all the, uh, nearly all the family uh, uh, helped as well, you know. Right. It wasn't only just one member of the family. It was everybody. Oh, yeah. 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 Or was it one of the Simmons and Gregor Cricketer or something? Yeah. For what? Harry. 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 Yes, well, he was killed as a major expert. I went back to the cricket home for country week. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's how you reckon you should play for a structure or something. Oh, yeah, but I reckon Jeff Grace would have, because he wouldn't go away from here. No, he wouldn't like. He went to Albury, played with Albury, and then he said, oh, no, it's not for sign. But he was a good, good player. Yeah. And football. Yeah. I remember the day he kicked 30 goals down a spirit. <laughs> That's a lot of goals for young player to kick. Yeah. Our, our full, full bank was the real son of the Jim Salmon. Yeah. And I was too honest now. We used to have a cup of tea because they had no canteen. 
and we have the cup of tea and Jim brought it. We just had a cup of tea and we took you out of the cupboards. Yeah, he's drinking a cup of tea while his other thoughts came up with the That did they win? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just didn't get best on the ground. That was the money to Really? Give you $30 and I can get the best on the We noticed on the way out here, just opposite before you get to the north, but the mark on the left hand side. Oh, yeah. Is it going out? What's what's written on the side wall? No. Uh, and Ron Wilkins did that. He gave us about a paper illustrated, you see. And then you got all the information and put it on those bits. Right. And it's, I think some sort of thing. Yeah. You think? <laughs> <laughs> I should know, I should know, I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, well, we got I know one day, I know a guy who used to live in it. And he lived in one of the homes and he played, he did all the. So with all the businesses and everything else around here, how many uh, are actually still operational from the original buildings or have they moved in others or most of them? Um, which are not more like that. Um, there's the pubs in there. The butcher shop has been there a long time, but it's had yeah, the breakfast joint, uh, the, what do you call it? Uh, 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 it, it, it used to be a store with a uh, vegetables around the front. General store. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. That is very really interesting. Um, the times of uh, petrol bears are being out in front of the general store, I think we need a huge Yeah, yeah, uh, not time ago. It wasn't that long ago, that was No, that's right. Yeah. Now, some of the boys that the built that um, Austin shop, he used to work for Hamilton store. Sure, yeah. And, yeah. and, they, and they, there was two Hamilton public school and now at Convent School. And they were. Convent School? Convent School. Yeah, yeah. School. And they, they, you know, anyway, that's still had a lot of good athletes. And um, they won the cup, and Ronnie, Ronnie was all excited, and he was running around because then he said he got took it on the public school because they didn't win. And he went to work, and Mr. Hamilton sacked him because he wasn't allowed to do a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the comms off was just. Just up, just up half, half a block, just up there. Just up there. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's something that I didn't know that there was a common here in a common school. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, you've done that all right. Thank you for the chat, mate. No worries. Thank you for the talk, guys. You've got a lot of insight into the history of how long. Thank you very much for the talk. Thank you, Andy. You're welcome. Yeah. And thank you, Andy. We'll let you get back to pour those ice cold beers. And, uh, yeah, mine's getting on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you lovely ladies and Ian go back and have a nice cold drink. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the insight into how long. Yeah. No worries. We'll let you go and have a drink now. Right, you will. You want to know any more? Just go into the bar. Yeah, they. With the running of the hotel, yep. you've got uh, a lot of patrons coming in and having a chat with you and yep. laughing and joking and a cry on the shoulder, so to speak. Yep. Um, how, do, how do you handle that? How do you go about helping people with some of their mental health issues? Well, yep. everyone's different. You've got to treat every person as an individual. Um, it, it, you've been here so long, you know the person pretty well. Like when they come here and they talk and I say, well, you've got to fix this up, we got to patch that up, or you've got too much to lose, you know, for the villain. Yeah, because a lot of them can't talk to their partners, whether it's male or female, they can't talk to their partners. 
I went to Kaiba Chutney. I'm not only had New South Wales, I went to Kaiba Chutney. I'm uh, a lot of them usually can find their four walls. Yeah. And I told them they're part of the part and say, What's going on? What's the problem? Well, me, but you're part of the problem. So they need to get out. And the only place they can go virtually besides the sports club is to the club. Okay. And a lot of them come from, they come and check on us and see how we're going. We checked on them. We, um, we're shut for 10 weeks. You've been at home delivering. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, you know, I need a slam or this or that. So I was still getting around a bit to catch up with people and having a beer with them. And... So, in, in, in a way, you were still operating. Yeah. So you could still do a lot of when, when they first shut us, they said we're going to be shut for six months. That's a long time. Yeah. And that, so we bought this big industrial pizza oven and looked for it. And we thought we'd uh, do pizzas, you know, on the sideline and a bit of home delivery. And anyway, we're still doing the pizzas. And, and we went to up for six months, up for 10 weeks. And um, we have a look back, really. A lot of people love coming to the pub, love coming having a drink, chat. If something comes for a bit of humor, a bit of, you know, someone having a go at someone, you know. It's, and, so, like, I saw it out more. Yeah. But they always, um, the regulars are down here all the time. And it's, that's one of the benefits of the pub. I wouldn't have liked to own a pub in the city. Oh, no. It's because you don't know anyone. Um, we looked at a pub at Canada and we nearly we were just finding papers to buy it. And, and Gerald said that he wanted to sell, so we bought it. We knew the figures were right. And, yep. Well, the one at Canada had accommodation, nightclub, and full work, jerks, everything. And how many headaches? Oh, yeah, we had that scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we bought a country pub and we've done a lot of renovations and all the labels get behind here and say, oh, we need a job done. I say, right, I can come and do it. Yeah, we'll have a working week. And a lot of them are happy because we just drink pain and it's in their accounts while we're in the pub. Actually, it's it's, some, some people don't pay too much. Yeah, but you still know it's going to come right. Yeah. I seen on, on one of the signs there just down in the dock, I think it was. How long is the home of the mansion? Well, it's got a mansion. They, they put up all the Christmas decorations around the hang on that. Yeah. So the older blokes up the do during the day. So it's just the older blokes that yeah. go to the men's sheds yeah. and the younger generations go as well? Oh, some do, some don't. Yeah. But yeah, we're not too bad. Yeah. So, what, what are some of the things that the men's sheds do? Well, they do furniture, they do all the Christmas. Decoration around the town, help out whatever they renovation or you know, small jobs, old chairs. Yeah. If someone's in need, they'll go and help them. So it's once again it comes back to the it's a community of it. Yeah. Community thing. Somebody needs help, you know, gets in help. Yeah. And it's still that is yeah. the main thing that in the community. That's the same with the farms. The farmers need help, they input the local community first. Like I find that uh, in the early days People used to go to the pub look for workers. Today, people go to the pub and you, they say, oh, you don't want to work. I say, no. So I can't recommend anyone. Uh, yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Because we, we look after international. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they, they want to get all these people over, back overseas to come and pick out grapes and come pick out fruit. Well, what's wrong with the, the society yeah, we got when you're here? I just think they think they're better. That would actually do. That's the problem with some of the other generations. It works out there. They think they're too good for it. They don't want to do it. The gap will cut and do well. Yeah, I'm talking about. They get the doll. They got an increase in their doll. And the one that's got job seekers or job seekers. Like I, we got the plant pub painted the other last month or last week. And I rang everyone and said, no one could do it till next Christmas. Or this Christmas. No, after Christmas. And one bloke said, well, I get like work for two days a week. They stay at home and work two days and they get more money than they know to do. I like that. I'm one of these generations that you want something, you go out and earn it, you go out and Yes. Well, we've got a uh, cool off down here, which is a pet meat process. Right? And they do kangaroo, they do deer, they do pigs now, they do everything. Is that the one out already? Yeah. I was wondering what that is. And they employ hundreds of people. But the local won't work because they will start to do something. Else. Some people don't want to wear it smelly, but they can sort of, you know, help hygiene, you know. 
Well, it's a job. Well, the, yeah, it is a job, and they've got all the personal hygiene measures in place, otherwise it wouldn't be an operation. That's right. They don't understand that. Right. No, because I used to work in an abattoir up very Hill at one stage, yeah. and a lot of people were saying, you can't even to work. Who wants to go there and work in a smelly environment? Well, I, I had it. I'm, I'm the youngest than nine. Nine? Mm. And I'm 50. I was 50. I was 20. How many were they? All right. And my brother rang me up, he, he's passed away now, but he worked on a property 20k down at Warren in New South Island, and they couldn't get workers in to water their pipe. That is shocking. So I drove up there and stayed to live with them and did the cops there. But... And, and once again, that comes back to the younger generation. Yeah. If they don't like the job, they won't do it. Well, it's houses and property if you have them, you could have lived there. And still make a way. Still make a way. I had a little bit less because you've got your accommodation included and yeah. your meal done. So, uh, are you still making work? People are still on work. Mm. And that's the problem. That's, uh, the younger generation's got to start realising that with how things keep them going in the community that they're in, get out there and chuck your hand and get them dirty. Yeah. Your community's going to survive. You don't get in there and, and get them dirty, you want to go for these high price jobs. Doing who knows what, they're getting your hands dirty. They're few and far between. Well, I've been here 15 years. I have one day of big years. It's Christmas Day. I don't know. But I have every other day. I have my clothes. So I said that's 11 till. Well, it's 10 o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock at night. I've got people. Yeah. So, you know, they've come into it, you know, only doing a little bit of work. Yeah, that's right. When you go over. Or when you're doing something like 14 hours a day, mm -hmm. depends on the customers you've got. Yeah. And you've got others that complain about doing two hours of work a day and getting into it. Yeah. Well, I, need to grow up. I need to grow up here. Yeah, well, I do. Hey. They're going to get tired. They do indeed. But they're not going to have time. So. No. The silver platter is almost empty. Yeah. So they need to start at a couple of holes and work out. And now, Andrew, I know the pub is still in the same spot as the original building, so this is probably still the original building. Yes, it would be. Yeah. Or some of it's been rebuilt. What was that about? It's about 1861? Yeah, about that. Yeah. About that. And I've got this little piece of uh, cardboard with printing on it. You said one of your customers gave to me. Yeah, Spanner. Spanner, and it's in memory of Spanner? Yeah. It sounds like Spanner was the top dude, and... Uh, a real patron of the pub. Well, he, he worked on the cancel here for years, and his other mate was Blue Murphy and Benny Lola. And old, old Blue would come and rattle the door in the morning at 10 o'clock, and if I wasn't open, he'd say, it'd be a good spot to build a pub if it was open. <laughs> so that, that was Blue, Spanny, Spanner and Benny. Wow. And and this is from Spanner's family? Yeah. Well, do you mind if I read it out on no, this on, on here? Yeah. And this is, this is the requirements of the perfect public. He must be a Democrat, an autocrat, an acrobat, a doormat, a boxer, a wrestler, a weightlifter, and a peacemaker. He also must keep the bars for uh, yeah, the bars full, the house full, the customers full, and there you go, these days that, and not get fooled himself. He also must be outside, inside, and offside. Glorified, sanctified, and studified. And if it's not all these things, unfortunately, they're suicide. Now, Andrew, do you want to read this out? Have you Thank you, Brad. Friends done for, for Spanner? Yeah. It was a, it was a like, like with all the stuff around town, all the concrete and baths and things at the end. The... So it's basically the, the town handyman. Yeah. So anybody that has done in the community, you said, yeah, I've got that covered. Yeah, yeah. No wonder you called you spat. Yeah. Yeah, he'd had it a long time. They really long time all this hand of it. Yeah. It sounds like he always had a tool in his hand of some sort, fixing something or holding something apart or... Yeah. Or even doing another bolt and fixing the gate. Yeah. They used to travel around together, the three bikes, and do whatever they did. Went to a pub here, a pub there. And then they came at the door and said, why don't you build a pub so we can have it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they were funny blokes. But they're all, oh, Benny's still alive, others still were deceased. Yes, with uh, mates like them, you can't go wrong, Benny. No. No. Uh, 
Now uh, this this is um, something that uh, Spanish family gave to Andrew and staff. As dear Andrew, Bernadette staff, and how long social club. Thank you for your care and support during this difficult time, which is just another of the many kindnesses you have shown over the years. They're all very special to Spanner. With love from Jen, Pete, Shay, Sam, Thomas, Will, and Jenna. Now this was printed, not the writing on the back, but the printing was done at the Gorcester Hotel in Aubrey in 1958. That's a testament to community and, and special words for any public in any community. And what I just read out on the back, families in the community to take note of people like Andrew and Bernadette and his staff and Spanner and his mates and all the things for the community. That's the whole embodiment of the spirit of community and spirit of mental health and getting in and helping out each other and helping out your fellow men. Now, we've got to do everything we can for our communities, especially our farmers. Because every farmer needs a community, and every community needs a farmer. And everybody on the planet, especially in this day and age, needs a farmer. No farmers, no communities. Nothing on the shelves in the shops. Get behind them, get behind your local communities. Get behind people like Andrew that does his job owning and operating a hotel so that you've got somewhere to come along, have a laugh, a chat, a joke and a cry. You never know, you might have to pop into the Howlong Hotel in Howlong and have a beer and a laugh with Andrew and his staff. Thank you, Andrew. No worries, thank, thank you. Thank you, mate. I'll let you get back to work. Right. Uh, thank you very I'll much. I'll do something today. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>